The glass effect in DaVinci Resolve is one of the coolest effects, mainly because this one video effect has almost unlimited creative possibilities that will bring your videos to the next level. So that's why in this video, I'm going to show you how to make this really sick looking glass effect. And the best part of this effect is that it's super easy to make. But then I'm gonna take it one step further and show you just how many different things that you can make with this effect. So all of that stuff and more coming up. But first, if you're new here, my name is Billy Ripka and I make weekly DaVinci Resolve tutorials about different effects, transitions, and workflows that'll help you become a better editor. So if you wanna level up your editing skills, click the subscribe button and the bell notification to stay up to date on the newest videos put out. But let's get into it. So now that we're in DaVinci Resolve, we're just going to go ahead and drag down our media clip onto the timeline and then jump straight into Fusion. So once we're in Fusion, this is where we're going to make this effect. First, if you want the single viewer like I have right here, just click this button right here at the top. It'll switch between single and double. Next, click on your media one node and copy it using control C and then paste it using control V. So if you don't know what a media in node is, it's ultimately just your video clip or whatever kind of media that you've brought into Fusion. So technically we just duplicated our media. Now grab the output of this duplicated media in node and connect it to the output of the original media in. And by doing that, it creates a merge node. So that's pretty neat. Next, click on that duplicated media in node and add a rectangle mask to it right here. And now we can just go ahead and make the rectangle like super long like this, like really long. So once you've made your shape, clearly nothing looks different. So then just add a transform node after this duplicated media right here. And then the inspector tab, bring up the size just a little so that now when you look at it, it actually looks like there's a magnifying glass or just a piece of glass over the frame. Like that part is just popping out. But as cool as it looks, it's not that noticeable. So you know what it needs? That's right, a shadow. So pull up our select tool menus by hitting control and space bar and then typing in shadow. And just go ahead and add that in right here. Now bring the softness up and adjust the shadow offset to whatever ultimately just looks good for you because I don't know what clip you're using or what motion you're gonna be doing. So totally up to you. And I'm also gonna drop the alpha just a little because the shadow is too dark. So now that shadow looks a lot better. Yeah. But honestly, that glass effect, it's just still a little too subtle. Like I want it to be seen. So now I'm just going to bring the size up in the transform. Now, if I click on the rectangle node and grab this center point and just drag it around, you see that that glass effect, it moves around with it. Like that's super cool. Now, the only problem with using the rectangle to control all of this is that the controls are limited. We're not able to use the pivot or even flip the animation. So you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna transform it. We're gonna add a transform node. That, that's, that's all I'm trying to say. Drag in the transform node. Now disconnect the rectangle from the media in and connect the rectangle to to the yellow input on the transform node. Then take the output from the transform node and connect it to the blue triangle on the media in. So now we can control this mask through our transform node. And you know what that means, right? We can add a pivot point for our masks by using this method. Now, I don't know about you, but it has always annoyed me that you couldn't add a pivot point to your mask. So we can with this. Next, put your playhead on frame 10 and make sure that this transform two is selected. Then in the inspector tab, we're gonna move our pivot over to the left, just like this. Then go ahead and bring the size down. And now it looks like the glass effect, like that mask is moving towards that pivot point. But clearly our pivot isn't far enough to the left. So we just need to go ahead and move it over to the left a little more towards outside the frame. Now go ahead and bring the size down more so the glass bar is out of frame. Then add a keyframe under size and move forward to frame 100. And then we're gonna go ahead and increase the size even more so until it goes out of frame on the other side. So the glass bar is just gonna wipe across the frame like this. And it looks all right, but it needs some curves because it's that's kind of flat and no one likes flat animations. So open up the spline tab and turn on the transform two by just hitting this check mark right here. And now I'm just going to expand this and then click fit to zoom right here. Now highlight the keyframes and hit S. S means smooth and that's what we want. We want smooth. Then grab the handles and create a curve that looks just like this. 
So now that looks way better. So now that we got that, ultimately the base effect is done. But the things that we can do with this effect is absolutely insane. So I'm gonna show you just how much flexibility and how many cool things you can do with this. So hold up, I'm gonna quickly interrupt here. If you haven't already heard, I've just released a YouTube Assets Starter Pack. Now this pack has 24 high quality, custom made subscribe animations, bell notification animations, like animations, a combined version of all of that, and 24 high quality custom made sound effects. Plus you can use any of these animations on any editing software like Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro, and of course DaVinci Resolve. You can use all of these assets in every single one of these programs. So if you guys are interested, click the link in the description to check it out. So let's get back into it. So if we wanna like spice it up and add some other color to it, we can literally do that. What we're gonna do is pull up our select tools and add a color corrector node after the shadow and then just change the color to whatever you want like i want red so now our glass effect is red or if you really want to spice some things up you can go ahead and delete this media in node right here and that's the one that we had actually duplicated and in its place we can add a totally different clip or image if you want to by dragging it in from our media bin and then connecting it back together again, just like you did with the media in. And so now you can see by doing that, our red line actually has a totally different clip inside of it. Now I know, now I know, like you may be saying like, Billy, this is great. How could you top this? Oh, just wait, there is more. Can you tell that I'm like super excited about this? Like I freaking love this effect. So we can highlight all of the nodes right here and copy it using control C and then paste it over here using control V. So now if you're tracking with me, we have two. Then just add it into our node tree by grabbing the output of the color corrector and dragging it to the output of the merge one. And then you can see once again, it has created a merge node. So now we can add the time speed node in after the color corrector node. And then under the time speed node in the inspector tab, we can bring up the delay to like 30 frames or so. And then under the interpolation mode, switch from blend to nearest. Ultimately, this is just gonna stop any weird distortion from like it trying to blend in with everything else. Like it just stops all of that weird crap that could go on. Just, just trust me here. And then we can just go ahead and change the color of this second one and bring it to blue. So now this is what we have. It's delayed, like there's two. Then if we want to really add that like dynamic feel, we can go ahead and add a transform node in after this merge node and then bring the playhead to frame zero. Then under size in the transform node, we're going to add a keyframe, then bring our pivot X over to the left where our animations are coming out from. And now zoom in using the size. We're not gonna zoom in super far. We want it to kind of be like a subtle zoom. Then move forward to frame 120 and hit this little button right here under size. This ultimately just brings it all back to the default, but we'll still add a keyframe. So now we can see there's a dynamic movement in this. And finally, if you wanna change the direction that this glass effect is coming in from, you can just go ahead and grab the pivot point and move it to the area that you want it at. And now look at the glass effect comes from the other side. It's so cool and you can do so many things with it. So there you have it, the easy glass effect in DaVinci Resolve. If you thought this video was helpful, give it a like and also share it with your friends so that they can put this effect in their videos. So what are you guys planning to do with this effect? Let me know in the comments below. I always love hearing about all the things that you guys are doing with these video effects. So if you want more videos just like this, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification to stay up to date on the new videos put out. And also, if you want those animations, click the link below. As usual, the video on the top is a video all about why I personally will never use optimized media again. And the video on the bottom is a video that YouTube thinks that you would like. But until the next one, peace.